Her manipulation destroyed Yu's once, but when she took her wedding savings, my heart shattered. Despite being insulted by my partner's mother when I spoke up to protect him, I forgave. However, I was devastated when his mother manipulated him and took our wedding savings. I'm Mary, 26, and my boyfriend is Alex, 28 years old. For over three years now, I've been in a relationship with my partner. So it's just been a journey filled with highs and lows, laughter and tears. But through it all, we've remained steadfast by each other's side. So we get he's a kind-hearted soul, gentle and introverted with a heart of gold. We've built a bond that's rooted in understanding and mutual respect, navigating life's challenges together as a team. However, our journey has not been without its obstacles. One of the biggest challenges we face comes from within Alex's own family, particularly from his mother. Yushi's a complex figure, let's call her Mrs. Smith. From the outside, Mrs. Smith may seem like a typical mother figure, but behind closed doors, her behavior tells a different story. The Mrs. Smith exhibits emotionally abusive tendencies towards Alex. She belittles him, criticizes his every move, and manipulates him to fulfill her own needs. It's a pattern of behavior that has persisted for years, casting a shadow over their relationship and leaving Alex feeling trapped and powerless. As I've witnessed the dynamics between Alex and his mother unfold, it's become increasingly clear to me the toll that this emotional abuse takes on him. The constant barrage of negativity chips away at his self-esteem, leaving him feeling unworthy and inadequate. Despite the pain it causes him, Alex yearns for his mother's love and approval, desperately seeking validation from a source that seems incapable of providing it. Miss Smith's troubled background serves as a backdrop to her emotionally abusive behavior towards Dwex. Three years ago, she went through a divorce that left her emotionally shattered. The dissolution of her marriage triggered a downward spiral in her mental state, exacerbating her already fragile emotional state. Unable to cope with the upheaval, Mrs. Smith's demeanor shifted, and she became increasingly bitter and resentful. Since the divorce, Mrs. Smith's daily routine has been marked by a sense of aimlessness and despair. She lacks motivation to engage in meaningful activities, often spending her days in isolation. Neglecting household chores and responsibilities, she allows the burden to fall on Alex and other family members. Her lack of contribution to the household only adds to the tension and resentment brewing within the family dynamic. In her interactions with Alex, Mrs. Smith's behavior takes on a toxic edge. She frequently belittles him, using cutting remarks to undermine his confidence and self-worth. Every accomplishment is met with criticism. Every mistake magnified and exploited. Her words are like daggers, piercing through Alex's defenses and leaving him emotionally wounded. Yelling has become a common occurrence in their household, with Mrs. Smith unleashing her frustrations on Alex without restraint. Her anger knows no bounds, and she lashes out at him over the smallest of perceived slights. The verbal assaults leave Alex feeling small and powerless, trapped in a cycle of emotional abuse from which he sees no escape. Manipulation is another weapon in Mrs. Smith's arsenal, used to control and coerce Alex into meeting her needs. She plays on his guilt and sense of obligation, exploiting his desire to please her at any cost. Whether it's guilt tripping him into running errands or emotionally blackmailing him into compliance, Mrs. Smith's manipulative tactics further entrench her power over Alex, leaving him feeling trapped and helpless. As the girlfriend of Alex, I've witnessed firsthand the profound impact of his mother's emotionally abusive behavior on him. Alex is a gentle and kind-hearted soul, but beneath his calm exterior lies a sea of emotional turmoil wrought by years of enduring his mother's toxic treatment. The constant barrage of criticism, belittlement, and manipulation from his mother leaves him in a perpetual state of unease and distress. His anxiety manifests in various ways, from racing thoughts and difficulty concentrating to physical symptoms like chest tightness and shortness of breath. These symptoms often escalate into full-blown panic attacks, rendering him immobilized and overwhelmed by fear. Her constant criticism and manipulation chip away at his self-esteem, leaving him feeling unworthy and unlovable. He internalizes her harsh words and begins to question his own worth, doubting whether he's deserving of love and respect. Alex's mother's behavior takes a toll on his mental health, exacerbating his anxiety and depression, and leaving him feeling overwhelmed and helpless. So her relentless negativity creates a toxic atmosphere in their household, making it difficult for Alex to find peace and solace in his own home. He feels like he's constantly walking on eggshells, afraid to set off his mother's anger or disappointment. Despite the pain and anguish caused by his mother's behavior, Alex continues to yearn for her love and approval, desperately seeking validation from a source that seems incapable of providing it. So his desire for his mother's affection is a double-edged sword, as it leaves him vulnerable to her manipulation and control. He fears confronting her and standing up for himself, worried about the repercussions and potential backlash. I found myself grappling with the heartbreaking reality of his situation when it comes to seeking refuge from his mother's toxic behavior. It's a question that weighs heavily on both of our minds. Can he come stay with his dad? The answer, unfortunately, is not as simple as we had hoped. 
Despite the desire to find sanctuary in his father's home, Alex's dad lives in a cramped one-bedroom apartment, unable to accommodate him. However, even in the face of this obstacle, there's a glimmer of hope in knowing that his father would do anything to support him. Alex's father would be willing to make the sacrifice of moving into a larger space to provide his son with the comfort and safety he so desperately needs. Yet, despite his father's potential willingness to make such a sacrifice, Alex remains paralyzed by fear at the mere thought of confronting his mother or seeking refuge elsewhere. The terror he feels towards his mother's wrath is a powerful deterrent holding him back from taking steps towards asserting his own autonomy and seeking a better life for himself. It's a heartbreaking reality that we're both faced with, knowing that we're working tirelessly to afford, to move out and create a safe haven away from the toxicity of Alex's home environment. However, as anyone who's tried to navigate the daunting landscape of housing affordability knows, it's an uphedal filled with financial constraints and limited options. Especially during one particularly tense visit home, I found myself unable to stay silent any longer in the face of Alex's mother's relentless barrage of criticism towards him. Fueled by anger and frustration, I couldn't help but speak up and argue back when she unleashed her harsh words upon him. I couldn't bear to see him being torn down yet again without standing up for himself. In the heat of the moment, my emotions got the best of me, and I even directed some of my frustration towards Alex, expressing my frustration at what I perceived as his weakness and standing up to his mother's abuse. I knew that if we continued to allow her toxic behavior to go unchecked, it would only serve to poison our future together. However, instead of diffusing the tension, my outburst only seemed to escalate the situation further. Alex's mother turned her fury towards him, accusing him of choosing me over her and demanding that he make a choice between us. It was a heartbreaking ultimatum to witness, knowing that Alex was caught between his loyalty to his mother and his love for me. As if that weren't enough, she didn't hesitate to hurl insults my way, mocking me for my perceived lack of education. Her words stung. Anger, frustration, and sadness coursed through me as I struggled to process what had just transpired. Unable to contain my feelings any longer, tears welled up in my eyes, threatening to spill over at any moment. I made the decision to leave. I couldn't bear to stay in that toxic environment a moment longer, surrounded by negativity and hostility. I hoped that Alex would come after me, that he would show some sign of defiance against his mother's control and choose to stand by my side. But as I walked away, my heart sank with the realization that he remained rooted in place, paralyzed by fear of his mother's wrath. So he remained a prisoner of his own fears, unable to defy the hold that his mother had over him. In the aftermath of the heated confrontation and my subsequent departure, I was left grappling with a whirlwind of conflicting emotions. Anger, hurt, and disappointment vied for dominance within me, but amidst it all, one undeniable truth remained. I loved Alex. Despite the pain he had caused me, I couldn't shake the deep-rooted affection I felt for him. A week passed, and despite my initial resolve to stand firm in my decision, I found myself unable to resist the pull of love and compassion. I couldn't bear to see Alex suffer alone, trapped in the suffocating grip of his mother's manipulation. So, against my better judgment, I forgave him. I rationalized my decision by telling myself that love was worth fighting for, that I couldn't abandon him in his time of need. But forgiveness didn't mean forgetting. I made it clear to Alex that while I was willing to give him another chance, I wouldn't subject myself to further abuse at the hands of his mother. From that point on, we chose to meet outside of his mother's house, avoiding the toxic environment that had caused us so much pain. However, just when I thought we were making progress, another blow came crashing down. Alex made the shocking decision to take the money we had been saving for our future together and hand it over to his mother. It was a devastating betrayal, one that cut me to the core. The realization that Alex had succumbed once again to his mother's manipulation was like a dagger to my heart. I felt a wave of despair wash over me, wondering how I could have been so blind to the extent of Mrs. Smith's control over him. So the money we had saved was meant to be a symbol of our commitment to each other, a tangible reminder of our dreams for the future. To see it squandered away on his mother's whims felt like a betrayal of everything we had worked so hard for. In that moment, I felt a profound sense of helplessness and despair. It was clear that Mrs. Smith's psychological manipulation knew no bounds, and I realized with a sinking feeling that I was powerless to stop it. Despite my love for Alex, I couldn't ignore the harsh reality of our situation. So while my heart ached at the thought of walking away, I knew that I couldn't continue to sacrifice my own well-being for the sake of a relationship that was built on a manipulation and deceit. So he and I broke up. One month later, I received a distressing call from Alex. His voice trembled with despair as he confessed that he felt utterly worthless, consumed by thoughts of despair and hopelessness. And my heart broke for him as he revealed that his mother had callously betrayed him, taking all the money he had given her and running away with another man. So in that moment, it became painfully clear that he needed me more than ever before. Driven by love and compassion, I made the decision to return to his side, determined to offer him the support and comfort he so desperately needed. Together, we embarked on a journey of healing, attending regular therapy sessions at the hospital to address his mental health struggles. Despite the challenges we faced, I remained steadfast in my commitment to him, serving as his rock and source of encouragement during 
during his darkest moments. I took it upon myself to create a sense of hope and optimism for our future, painting a vivid picture of the beautiful life that awaited us once he emerged from the shadows of his past. Slowly but surely, his spirit began to stabilize and the light of hope flickered once again in his eyes. In the midst of our shared struggles, our bond only grew stronger, forged in the fires of adversity and strengthened by our unwavering love for each other. It was during this time of turmoil and transformation that we made the decision to take the next step in our journey together. And we decided to get married. Filled with a renewed sense of purpose and determination, we embarked on the exciting journey during our future together, eager to leave the pain and heartache of a past behind us. Though with each passing day, our love continued to blossom, a beacon of light guiding us towards a brighter tomorrow. And as we stood hand in hand, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead, I knew in my heart that together, we could conquer anything that came our way. So now, after being married for 10 months, I find myself pregnant with our son, a new chapter of joy and anticipation unfolding before us. However, just as we began to revel in the happiness of impending parenthood, the specter of Alex's estranged mother reappeared, casting a shadow of uncertainty over our lives once again. With tearful pleas and desperate appeals, she sought to worm her way back into our lives, leaving me feeling torn and uncertain about what course of action to take. In the midst of this turmoil, I find myself grappling with conflicting emotions. So as the gravity of the situation weighed heavily on my mind, I felt compelled to speak up, to plead with my husband to reconsider the idea of letting his estranged mother back into our lives. So the thought of subjecting our unborn child to the same pain and turmoil that Alex had endured in the past filled me with an overwhelming sense of dread and urgency. In a quiet moment together, I took a deep breath, stealing myself for the difficult conversation that lay ahead. With a heavy heart and trembling voice, I began to express my deepest fears and concerns to my husband, laying bare the raw emotions that churned within me. Alex, I started, my voice wavering slightly. I know that your mother's sudden reappearance has stirred up a whirlwind of conflicting emotions within you. But please, I beg of you, consider the implications of allowing her back into our lives. I reached out, grasping his hand tightly in mine, seeking solace and support in his reassuring presence. I think about what she did to you in the past, I continued, my voice trembling with emotion. Do you really want to expose our child to the same kind of toxicity and negativity that you endured? Tears welled up in my eyes as I spoke, my heart aching with the weight of my words. I don't want our child to grow up in an environment filled with pain and resentment, I pleaded desperation lacing my words. And we deserve better, Alex. Our child deserves better. I searched his eyes, silently pleading for him to understand the depth of my fears and concerns. But as I gazed into his eyes, I saw the conflict raging within him, the turmoil of emotions that mirrored my own. For a long moment, there was silence between us, punctuated only by the soft sound of our breathing. And then, with a heavy sigh, Alex spoke, his voice tinged with uncertainty and hesitation. I understand your concerns, Sarah, he said softly, his gaze dropping to the floor. But she's still my mother. And despite everything that's happened, I can't shake off the feeling that I owe her another chance. But my heart sank at his words, a sense of resignation settling over me like a heavy blanket. I knew that trying to convince him otherwise would be futile, that his sense of duty and obligation to his mother ran deep. Frustration and anger consumed me as I stormed out of our home, my swollen belly a heavy burden against my frame. Blocking my husband's calls, I sought solace in the company of my best friend, pouring out my grievances in a torrent of tears and frustration. Days turned into weeks, my mood swinging wildly between anger and despair as I struggled to find stability amidst the chaos. Then, one fateful day, a sharp pain tore through my abdomen, sending me doubling over in agony. Fear gripped my heart as my best friend rushed me to the hospital, the urgency of the situation propelling us forward with a sense of urgency. In the sterile confines of the hospital room, the truth of our predicament hit me like a sledgehammer. My baby just turned eight months old, fought for life within the confines of my womb, his premature arrival a stark reminder of the fragility of life. As doctors and nurses bustled around me, their urgent voices a cacophony of chaos, I clung to a sliver of hope, praying fervently for the safety of my unborn child. Time seemed to stand still as I waited with bated breath the weight of uncertainty pressing down on me like a suffocating blanket. Then, with a cry that pierced the air like a beacon of hope, my son was born. Fragile and vulnerable, he lay cradled in the arms of the medical staff, his tiny form a testament to the miracle of life amidst adversity. In that moment, as I gazed upon the tiny bundle of joy nestled against my chest, a wave of overwhelming love washed over me, drowning out the chaos and uncertainty that had plagued me for so long. Despite the challenges that lay ahead, I knew that I would do whatever it took to protect and nurture this precious gift, my son, my reason for hope in a world fraught with uncertainty. As my husband rushed to my side, his face a mixture of worry and relief, I felt a surge of emotions wash over me. In his arms, I found solace and strength, his presence a reassuring anchor amidst the tumultuous sea of emotions that threatened to overwhelm me. His embrace was a testament to the love and support that had sustained us through the darkest of times, his warm touch a balm to my weary soul. In that moment, as we held each other close, I knew that together we could weather any storm that life threw our way. 
So with tears of joy streaming down our faces, we marveled at the tiny miracle cradled in my arms, his delicate features a poignant reminder of the preciousness of life. In his innocent gaze, I saw hope and promise for the future, a beacon of light in the darkness that had threatened to engulf us. Update. After a long and difficult conversation, my husband and I made the tough to Sessai, mother-in-law in a nursing home. It wasn't an easy choice, but we knew it was necessary for her well-being and our own peace of mind. However, shortly after she was admitted, we received news that she had fled from the facility. Learning that she had run away once again filled me with a sense of dread and anxiety. Despite our best efforts to provide her with the care she needed, it seemed that she was determined to resist any form of confinement. Her refusal to stay in the nursing home left us feeling helpless and uncertain about what to do next. As I shared these concerns with my husband, I couldn't shake the feeling of impending doom that hung over us. The thought of her returning and causing havoc once more weighed heavily on my mind, casting a shadow of fear and uncertainty over our lives. Despite our attempts to move forward and create a sense of stability for our family, the specter of my mother-in-law's actions continued to haunt us, a constant reminder of the challenges we faced in caring for her and protecting our own well-being. In the midst of this uncertainty, I found myself grappling with conflicting emotions torn between my sense of duty towards my husband's mother and the need to prioritize the safety and happiness of our own family. It was a difficult balancing act, one that left me feeling exhausted and overwhelmed. As we navigated this new chapter in our lives, I couldn't help but wonder what the future held in store for us. Would my mother-in-law return, disrupting our lives once again? Or would we finally find a sense of peace and stability, free from the turmoil that had plagued us for so long? So only time would tell, but for now, all we could do was wait and hope for the best, clinging to the belief that somehow, we would find a way to overcome whatever challenges lay ahead.